Hello, every. Oh, that was interesting. I just came on here, and Annabelle, my dog, is doing a little a little snore. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I wanted to just come on here and do a little impromptu Facebook Live. So, welcome if you are brand new to this group. If you've been here for a long time, good to see all you guys. Um, and if you don't know who I am, I'm Brianna. I am the founder of this group and I also help teen girls and young women end the vicious cycle of their mental health challenges so that they can rise above them and truly start loving themselves from the inside out. And I want to talk to you. I haven't been on here in a little while, um, but there's just so much, so many good things happening with, with the work that I'm doing in the world and it would be silly for me to hold it all in without sharing any of this with you. So I just got off of an incredible group coaching session with the, with the young women that are in my program right now. And it was so, like, I can't, like, how do I even describe, like, how do I even put into words, like, what just happened, you know? I will do my best. <laughs> I will do my best uh, just to kind of explain what I'm feeling and what I what I'm seeing from from the girls and young young women who are who are doing this work. So one of the things that I wrote in this Facebook Live is that and oh by the way if you're joining me live let me know you're here live comment below live if you're watching the replay go ahead and comment replay just so I know I'm not doing a, a nice little monologue here. God knows I love monologues, but I, I like interaction. I like engagement. And if anything I'm saying like sparks some interest or you want to put some questions down below, I'll make sure to answer them, um, whether it's now or, or later. So I put in this, uh, what did I title this? Like anxiety, depression, self-harm. That's not actually what is making your daughter miserable. If your daughter is struggling with her mental health, then you know chances are she may be struggling with anxiety. She may be struggling with depression. She may be struggling with self-harm or eating disorder or suicidal thoughts or suicidal attempts. Um, and none of those things, while they may seem like, you know, well, the, this is like, this is major, like these are the issues. That's actually not, that's not what is the big issue for your daughter, even though it seems that way, right? The big issue is that your daughter doesn't know how to connect with herself. And this is, look, this is not what's being talked about out there. It's very easy, you know, the, the traditional approach of Western medicine and, and how it does its thing, it's like, People will label your daughter daughter with having a chemical imbalance. They will put her on medication. They will send her off to therapy where she vents about, you know, her life and, and what's been going on. And, you know, the bigger question to ask is, is any of this stuff working, right? Like, is your daughter healing? Is your daughter learning how to love herself? Is your daughter understanding how to take control of her life by feeling empowered and no longer a victim is she changing her mindset is she is she practicing you know self forgiveness self compassion self love what are the tools and the skills that she's learning like if your daughter is in therapy or residential or a, another program like what is she learning and is she applying it like, is it, is it helping her? You know, these are all like important questions that you got to ask yourself, right? Just to see, okay, like, let me, let's see, like, is what we're doing, like, is it working, you know? And a lot of families who come to me have tried the traditional approach and it, and it just hasn't worked out for them, right? Uh, it hasn't worked. And their daughters are suffering more than ever before. And the sad thing about so many families who come to me is the length of time, the length of time that these girls have been suffering is really sad because I'm a big believer. It doesn't, it's not just a believer in this. Like I know it to be true 
that it doesn't actually have to take a decade, five years, 10 years for your daughter to get on the other side of this, for your daughter to take control of her life, for your daughter to love herself in her life. Why should that have to take 10 years or a year or five years? Like, absolutely not. If what she's doing is working, it actually doesn't take that long. And so the sad thing about what I'm seeing with a lot of girls and young women who come to me is like they've been struggling for so long. It's like some girls come to me, it's like four years, five years, 10 years, like over a decade, you know, like I have people coming to me, it's like, it's just, it's been so long and I'm just like, oh, why? Like, why? Why? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be that way. It really, really doesn't. And what I want to talk about, like when we look at like anxiety and depression and, and all of the, the symptoms and I'm putting them in quotes because none of those are the root issues. It's like, let's actually get to the root issue here. How is your daughter with herself? Like, can your daughter come back home to herself? What do I mean by that? When your daughter is going through, I see some people joining. If you're, uh, if you're here live, great. Let me know you're here live. Go ahead and write live in the comments below or go ahead and if you're watching the replay, or, you know, comment replay. So many girls and so many young women who are struggling with their mental health, I think the biggest thing that they struggle with is what to do with these big emotions, okay? These big emotions are here for them to acknowledge them, for them to honor them and accept them and process through them in a healthy way. And one can only process through these emotions by allowing themselves to feel it. And this is the place that so many girls and so many young women have never learned how to like how to do this kind of work because emotions feel too big right there it, and it could be it could be a bunch of different emotions it's like shame anger sadness grief um guilt blame like there can be so many emotions that they're feeling all at once and it's like, well, what do they do if they've never, if they've never learned, if your daughter has never learned how to process through her feelings and emotions, like we can't expect them to know how to do this on their own if, if they've never learned. And then we have to also ask, well, is therapy teaching these girls how to process through feelings and emotions? Or is therapy just talking about what's going on. And now you you can ask your daughter, you know, obviously like, look, if your daughter's in therapy, like obviously you can ask her, what's your experience been like? And I'm sure you probably already know that. Maybe you don't even need to ask her, right? But we need to get beyond just the talking and actually move into movement and healing and getting to the root because anxiety and depression and self-harm and suicidal and suicidal thoughts, it's like, again, these are not the root issues and we've got to go deeper, okay? There's symptoms of something deeper going on. And the deep thing that nobody seems to be talking about is the level of self-hatred and self-loathing that is going on with these girls and young women. And so of course, if you're hating yourself so much and when you go through a breakup or when you go through a fight with mom or a fight with dad, or it's like, you know, you get a bad grade at school or you're not doing well in school or you're being bullied. And it's like, it feels, it feels a lot as it should. I, I get that that's a lot to go through, right? And it's like, how is your daughter relating to herself is the bigger question, right? Like, is your daughter able to comfort herself? Is your daughter able to just like sit there in her heart, allow herself to feel her emotions 
and honor herself for every single emotion that's coming up for her. <sighs> this is the work. So many girls will run to a distraction, smoking weed, smoking pot, vaping, um, sexting, um, promiscuity, um, sleeping all day, um, social media addiction, whatever it, binging, purging, anything and everything. So they don't have to feel their pain. So they don't have to feel their trauma. So they don't have to feel their stuckness. But let me tell you, all of that stuff is still inside of them, right? So a girl or a young woman who doesn't know how to allow herself to feel all of like her, her pain and her trauma and, and, and wounds from the past, like all of it, again, what happens to that pain and that trauma is it gets suppressed and it gets pushed down and it, come, it can come up in a lot of ugly ways. Right. And when I say ugly ways, I mean, it can be lashing out at you. Like it could be you trying to be there for her all the time. And it's like your your daughter is angry and it's not really you. She's angry at. Right. Again, the the suppressed emotions will come up one way or the other it could be lashing out. It could be like having a, a temper tantrum. It could be yelling, crying, screaming, breakdowns, or it could be more quiet. It could be just sleeping all day. Like, you know, well, sleeping all day, it's not really, it's not coming out through sleep, right? But that's an avoidance. Like if your daughter prefers to sleep all day, she's, avo she's trying to avoid living, right? And I think something that's so important here is that it's like, how many girls and how many of your daughters are like, going through the motions, like put a one, if, if you're with me live or if you're watching the replay, like put a one in the comments. Like if you feel like your daughter is going through motion, like going through the motions here, but not truly living because unfortunately that's how so many girls and young women are going through their lives. Like they're not truly living, they're existing. And existing is no way to live your life. Because at that point, it's like, what are we doing? Like, what are we here for? Right? It's kind it's it's not, it's not the life that your daughter is meant to be living by merely existing her way through life. By merely just going through the motions and it's pretty obvious to see where your daughter is in her life like how is she showing up right what's your relationship like with your daughter is she isolating i mean that's one of the biggest things that so many girls struggling with their mental health do they isolate right because they don't know how to be vulnerable with themselves so they don't know how to be vulnerable with other people right so because of that, it's like, okay, so they isolate, they're alone, and that just makes them feel worse. So not only are they dealing with some big emotions and anxiety and depression and all that, whatever else, it's like, and then they're feeling like alone in all of it. It's like the worst feeling ever. It truly is. So what I think is so important is that your daughter learns how to start connecting with herself and start having a different re kind of relationship with herself. Now, what kind of relationship am I talking about? Well, one of the things that we really um, dove into today in my group coaching session is self-compassion. So many girls don't know how to be self-compassionate and it's crazy that they're not teaching this in school because they teach the math and the English and the science and the history and the art and the PE and they teach all these things and like why is there not a class on self-compassion like I don't know 
I don't know. I hope it, I hope and pray at some time things can change and schools can can really, you know, start doing more. So really start doing more for these girls that are struggling. And when I and look, boys are struggling too. But I talk about the girls because, you know, this these are this is the demographic of who I work with. So, they don't know how to connect with themselves. And again, this bleeds into the the lack of self-compassion. Because any girl who is hating them, if they hate themselves, and by the way, you may think that, oh, a girl hating themselves, like that's not, that doesn't happen that often. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised because every single girl and young woman who has ever come into my program, it's like, there is always a level of, I don't like myself. Uh, there's, there's some girls that flat out say, I hate myself. I really, truly do. I don't see my life as it, it doesn't matter. There's no purpose. I don't know why I'm here. I feel like I'm a waste of space. There are girls who will say this, right? And then also there, you know, occasionally there are some girls who think they're, they love themselves, but then when we kind of get deeper in their story, it's like, you know, this is a girl who says she loves herself, but she was in an abusive relationship recently. You know, it's like, sweetie, you don't, you don't really love yourself if you were in an abusive relationship and you allowed that kind of behavior to continue. That's not self-love, you know? So we have to be very clear about what it, like, what is self-love? What's this thing called self-compassion? And how can your daughter start embracing this? Like, how can your daughter start to build a different kind of relationship with herself? So here's the thing. Your daughter cannot change anything about herself without having awareness of what she's doing. This is really, really important. Because if your daughter is kind of like in denial or not only de in denial, but I feel like if your daughter is not present to how she is experiencing life and how she is showing up and how she is talking to herself, it's nearly impossible. I'm not even going to say nearly. I'm going to take out nearly. It's impossible for your daughter to change if she's not even aware of like what she's doing. And if that doesn't make any sense, it really does come down to your daughter being present. Because if your daughter's not present, she's constantly in her head and she's constantly having these racing thoughts. And she's constantly going into the past and like focusing on past experiences and trauma and pain, or maybe going into the future, into worst case scenario, right? And that just brings on a whole lot of anxiety or she's going in the past and that's bringing in a whole lot of depression. And how many of your daughters can actually practice being here in the now? Because being here in the now, there is no depression. Being in here in the now, there is no anxiety. Being here in the now is something that has to be practiced because and this is not girls, young women, like most adults don't even know how to be present. You know, it's like somebody's talking to us and we're not even here. We're like over there. We're thinking about something else. And it's like, oh my God, my friend's talking to me and I'm, I'm not even here. You know, what does this have to do with like self-compassion? What does this have to do with your daughter? Because without self-awareness, self-awareness only comes from being present in the moment. And without that, it's impossible for your daughter to have a transformation if she can't be present with herself in how she is. All of her emotions, all of her feelings are coming up in the present moment. And she's going to have to do something in that present moment to start experiencing her emotions in a different kind of way, right? So again, looking how at how so many girls and young women our experiencing life, it's like, it's a lot of shutdown. It's a lot of pushing things down. It's a lot of avoidance. It's a lot of, I don't want to feel it. It's too much. It's too painful. I can't go there, right? A lot of these girls, again, like I said it earlier, like they don't know how to be vulnerable with other people. They don't know how to be vulnerable with themselves, right? They don't even know how to, how to embrace that. And so part of this is like getting your daughter one, connect with herself. Two, learn how to be present. Three, stop going to, uh, to a distraction. And four, start allowing herself to feel her.
her emotions and feelings. Right? That's what it is. I'll do it in uncomfortable silence right now, right? If I stop talking for three minutes, you know, three minutes, not three minutes. If I stop talking for a few seconds, it's like, we don't know what to even do with silence. So sometimes we feel the need to always fill that silence. I'm just, what if I, I'm gonna stop talking for like 10 seconds. Let's, let's see that awkwardness. <laughs> What's happening? What am I doing? It's in this silence that your daughter discovers who she is. It's in this silence that your daughter comes back home and starts truly connecting with herself. Life is busy. Life can be chaotic. There's a lot going on. Work school, friends, relationships, you name it, extracurriculars, sports, things like that. There's so much. And we grow, we are in a culture of busyness. We are not in a culture of connection. We are not in a culture or a society of bringing in like more silence and more, more peace right? We're on to the next thing. We got to get that hit of dopamine. It's like, right? Some of you have already, already scrolled beyond this because this got real boring real fast. <laughs> some, some of you are still here. Some of you are watching, right? When the entertainment is gone, we go to the next thing. Oh, it's not entertaining anymore. You know, <laughs> it's the same thing. Like why so many of your daughters are addicted to social media. It's like, it's just the ongoing game of scrolling. Scroll, 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 scroll. How, lo how long are we going to do this? How many more minutes? How many more hours of the day are we going to waste away our lives from scrolling and distracting ourselves from what's really here, what's really present? We can, we can play that game all day long. Same with your daughter, right? It's like we're distracting ourselves from actually being in life, like enjoying life, being present to life right? With all, without all of this distractions, like who is your daughter? That's a thing that like a lot of girls don't even know who they are, you know? And it's like, well, yeah, if we, if we let go of all the distractions, if we, if we ditch the cell phone, if we ditch the Instagram or the social media and we, and we let that go and the need for validation and the need for like, who are you? Like outside of all of that, who are you? And if you don't understand how this has anything to do with anxiety or depression or self harm or suicidal thoughts, let me be very clear. It has everything to do with your daughter's mental health. This is not popular, okay? Nobody wants to have a conversation about, well, I don't wanna say nobody. <laughs> there are some people that wanna talk about this. A lot of people wanna put a Band-Aid on the issue and, and slap your daughter with a prescription for uh, a medication send her off to therapy and hope for the best. And, and the, the problem is when that's not working, then, okay, let's try another therapist. Let's try another medication. Let's do the guinea pig approach of trying just more and more and more medications that may have horrible side effects. And let's just go. Let's just keep on going with that route because that's mainstream. That's mainstream. That's what they tell us we got to do because your daughter is being told that she has a chemical imbalance. And that's the only way to fix it. One, <laughs> do we need to believe that? Do we? Or can we believe something different? Right? <sighs> I had a girl, a young woman in today's group session say that we did, um, I did this sort of healing practice where the girls connected with themselves and 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 supported themselves and just kind of, um, I'm trying to explain it the best way that I can. Um, it was this healing practice of just connecting with themselves and, and getting quiet, right? 
And I had, after we were done, I had one young woman share that it actually brought on more anxiety. And I asked her like, why, you know, I was, I was curious and I asked why. And she said, well, because she's always anxious. So it's like bringing in peace and calm and, and more quiet is like, is, is foreign to her because she's constantly dealing with anxiety. And I said, yeah, it's because like, your body and your nervous system has grown so familiar to a life of anxiety that anytime we try to bring in like peace and calm, it's like, it's like, oh no, oh no. It's like danger, danger, danger. That's like what her body is doing. So much of this work is not just in here. It's in here. It's in your daughter's body. It's in her nervous system. Her nervous system and her body has become so used to, maybe for some of your daughters, so used to a life of um, anxiety, of stress, of overwhelm. If when your daughter was younger, if there was a lot, and, and still now, if there was a lot of chaos in the house, if there was fighting, if there was yelling, if there was drama, if there was fighting, if that was going on, especially at a young age, because those are the most formative years, you know, for uh, for um, for someone, and it's all it can also be affected as they as they grow older too. But the younger years are especially important. So if there was a lot of fighting and yelling and 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 screaming and and or if there was alcoholism or drug addiction or like things that were going on around your daughter at that time, then. There's something like in your daughter's nervous system that is feeling more safe in that um, stressed out space. Like it feels more safe for your daughter to feel the stress, to feel the anxiety, to feel the overwhelm. And that's just typically where she resides, right? So we have to teach your daughter, not just intellectually, but in here, in her body, in her nervous system, in her cells, that it's actually safe to feel at peace. It's actually safe to feel at ease. It's actually safe to relax, right? And so again, and this is not a, a blame or a shame if, if your daughter had that growing up, and there was a lot of chaos and there was a lot of turmoil in the house and there was a lot of fighting maybe between mom and dad or whomever. It's not a matter of like now you beat yourself up for the rest of your life because your daughter grew up in a, in a family like that. No, that's not what this is about. This is about your daughter taking radical, you know, one of the things I always say in my, in my program, it's like it's about your daughter taking radical responsibility for her life. And in order to do that, it's like, this is up to your daughter, but your daughter can't do this on her own. Your daughter's not an expert in mental health transformation. Your daughter's not an expert in self-love. Your daughter's not an expert in any of the healing work or any of the things I'm talking about. So while it's up to your daughter to do this, she also has to be guided. She also has to have a mentor or a coach or someone who can show her and guide her through this. Because otherwise, so many of these girls are getting, they get stuck. They get stuck in this anxiety, um, it, it, the stress, the overwhelm, the, the depression, the sadness, right? And it's like, they don't know a way out of it. And it can feel very, very overwhelming. And I'm telling you guys, the longer that your daughter is struggling, the, the worse it feels for your daughter and the worse it can get, right? So over time, it just naturally, progressively can get worse and worse. And that's what we're finding. Like, that's what I'm seeing with so many families who are coming to me. It's like, you know, my daughter has been struggling for five years. My daughter has been struggling for 10 years. You know, most people don't come to me when... um like their, their first, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, most people, I'm not saying all, I'm not going to say all, all families, 
but most people and most moms or most dads who reach out to me, who book a call, who've seen my webinar, who've seen my work, who resonate with what I'm doing in the world, they have seen their daughter struggling for quite a while. Again, I'm generalizing, but majority, that's the case, okay? Um, and the reason that what I am doing with teen girls and young women is, is um, what's the word? Oh my God, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, is, in, I don't want to say enticing. That's not the right word. It's like the reason that, okay, I found the word. The reason that they're drawn to the work that I'm doing is because they've seen the mental health system not working for their daughter. They've seen it not work. They see that the system is broken. But if I just say the system is broken, try my approach. And if you've never taken your daughter to therapy, if you've never taken your daughter, you know, to a doctor where they've prescribed her a bunch of medications, like you kind of don't know that world yet. You kind of don't know how the mental health system is working. And so a large, a large portion of the people who, who come to me have been through it for a long time because we trust doctors. We trust therapists. We trust the medical profession and the mental health system to do what it needs to do to get your daughter back. And unfortunately, the reality of how the mental health system is working and has been working for some time is that it's not working in the way that you want it to work. Because if your daughter is still struggling and she's been through it, maybe she's been through residential, maybe she's been inpatient or outpatient or ER visits, um, therapy, you know, different kinds of medications, psychiatrists, um, all, all the things, you, you've seen it firsthand. You've seen it firsthand because you've watched your daughter struggle through this. You've watched your daughter, you've taken, you physically have driven your daughter to that therapist's office week after week, or maybe it's on Zoom now, I don't know, right? You've, you've sat in that doctor's office with your daughter as the doctor said, you know, maybe the doctor talked to your daughter for a little while, and then the doctor's writing a prescription for a medication and then you're sitting there being like, I don't wanna put my daughter on medication. Like I, I, I don't wanna do that. But, but then you're, you may also be feeling like, but what else do I do? Like, I don't wanna see my daughter suffer like this. This is, this is horrible. Like I can't handle it. She can't handle it. I don't know what else to do. And so a lot of families like feel like they're kind of like, kind of lost in all of this like what do I do I want my daughter back of course like I'm gonna I'm gonna try what the doctor is telling me if the doctor is saying Lexapro let's try it if the doctor is saying Zoloft let's try it and then it's like okay so then you try the medication and then you see if it works and for and for so many girls and so many young women it's like it doesn't and so you, you take your daughter back to the doctor and you say, this, this medication is not working. Or maybe, you know, you're meeting with a psychiatrist. This, you know, doctor, this isn't working. Or maybe there's some side effects. It, this is not working. What else do you have in mind? These doctors are not talking about healing. These doctors are not talking about trauma. These doctors are not talking about mindset. These doctors are not talking about lifestyle. These doctors are not talking about self-love. These doctors are not talking about any of that. Because that's what that's not what they're trained to do. Right? So we can like bless all the doctors and what they are doing. And we've just got to be real and honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Is that working? You know? And then we go the therapy route. Okay, so let's say medication isn't working. Let's let's try some therapy. You drive your daughter to the therapist's office, right? Or maybe she's doing it over Zoom or something like that. And it's like, okay, you drop your daughter off. Maybe she's there for an hour. You pick her up. Hey, sweetie, how did therapy go? Maybe she's maybe she shares. Maybe she doesn't. You know, like is is it is it helping? 
You know, you might be like, is it helping? Is it, is it working? And you know, I, again, I don't know your relationship with your daughter, if she shares or if she doesn't. And it's like, and maybe you don't even ask that if it's helping, you know, maybe you can just see, I'm not maybe, I know you can see it because you can see how she's living her life if it's working or if it's not, right? And so maybe you, you stick with that therapist. Let's just give it more time. Let's just, let's give it more time. Six months at least. Let's just try six months every week. Go see her for an hour or him, you know, just try. Like we have to try something. So you try and you give it maybe six months and your daughter is in the same place that she was before, or maybe it's gotten worse. Okay. Maybe, maybe we should try with somebody else, you know? Okay. So maybe you go to the yellow pages. Maybe you ask the doctor if he's got a referral, you know, maybe you talk to people, Hey, do you know a good therapist? Like my daughter's still struggling. Okay. So let's try a different therapist and you have high hopes because you believe that their therapy model should work, right? It should. These are trained professionals, right? They should know what they're doing, right? So you find another therapist and you drive your daughter to the therapist office or, or maybe it's on Zoom, right? So your daughter starts up with another therapist. Hey, sweetie, you know, how's it going? Like, is, how are you feeling? Okay, you keep, you keep, you know, keep trying. You know, next week happens, you take her to therapy. You know, you pick her up or she's doing it on Zoom. Okay, how's it going? You know, is it, do you feel like it's helpful? Do you feel like you're learning tools? Are you doing any healing work? Are you learning how to love yourself, sweetie? Tell me. The vast majority, and I'm not, I'm not saying that like all therapy, you know, is ineffective. I'm not saying that. So please don't come at me. <laughs> But here's what I am saying. Therapy is very different than what I'm doing here with girls and young women. And let me explain that. A lot of girls who come to me and a lot of young women who come to me are saying, you know, they've been in therapy for years, multiple therapists, and it feels like it's a lot of them talking like about their week, about what's going on right now. And maybe sometimes things in the past are brought up, but oftentimes, even if they're talking about the past, they may be talking about it. Sorry, I got a dog who's snoring right here. They may be talking about it, but are they doing the healing work? <laughs> got a, I got a snoring dog right here. So here's what I want to say about this. It's so important. Oh my God, I'm making this a super long Facebook live and I'm going to have to go soon because I haven't eaten dinner and I'm getting hungry. Um, it's so important for these girls and young women to, to do the healing work. Okay. When they go through traumatic experiences, when they go through pain and nobody, I mean, nobody is immune to this. If you are a human being on the face of this planet, we have all experienced pain, right? We've all gone through really, really hard times and struggles. And we got to learn how to clean that up. We've got to learn how to create a new meaning and a new narrative with what's happened in our lives. We've got to take the victimhood away and then bring up empowerment, right? We've got to create a new identity shift of who we want to be and not who we've always been, right? The healing work is, is, is not what is happening for a lot of girls. I'm not going to say all, but I'm going to say a lot of girls who are going to therapy. So where does that leave you, right? Okay, well, we've tried the medication. We've tried the therapy, well, maybe like, maybe we need to send, you know, maybe we need to send her off to residential. Well, residential, like for three months, I mean, residential can be longer, but that's an awful long time to have to send your daughter away. And look, all residential places are different. And I, you know, I can't make a generalized statement. Um, as far as the girls and young women who have, you know, done residential and have come into my program, 
sometimes like there was a girl in my program who said that she went into like, I think it was a residential facility for her eating disorder. And while it helped with the eating disorder, she came back with like horrible depression, unlike self-harm. And that was never there before. Well, the eating disorder was gone, but now she's depressed and now she's self-harming, right? That's not okay. That's certainly not. So, I mean, obviously, if you're sending your daughter to residential, like do your research, you know? But wouldn't it be more appealing to have your daughter in the safety of your own home doing all of this work, like the healing work, the self-love work, the mindset work, the empowerment work, without having to send your daughter off for three months or six months or nine months or a year or whatever. It's like having her do it in the safety of her own home would, it would be incredible, right? So I want to bring this back to like what I'm doing. I Again, this is an awfully long face, Facebook Live, but here, here I go. <laughs> your daughter gets to live... Hold on, let me let me rephrase this. Your daughter can have the life that she wants for herself. And even if your daughter is in a horrible place, being suicidal, self-harming, like has no self-worth, has no self-value, like there's a vision for your daughter's life. And even if she can't see it, even if she can't feel it, even if she feels like, that's never going to happen. Like I'm not, I'm not going to live to 30. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to do great things with my life. One, that's not true. And two, it's like, she needs help creating a vision, right? She needs help to create that vision of what she wants for herself, what she wants for her life. And this is, again, this is a, this is a thing, you know, if a girl has no self-worth, if a girl has no self-value, then again, it's it's hard for them to want to do anything to better their lives. So this is this is the place that a lot of a lot of families struggle with, right? You have you have some girls that are like, please find me something that will help me because I can't stand feeling this way for one more second. So there are girls and young women and some of those daughters are, you know, you, you may have a daughter who's like, please mom, like we need to find something. Like I can't live this, I can't live life like this anymore. So that's like, that's one group, right? Girls and young women who feel that way. Then there's the other group of, of girls and young women who have been struggling for so long that they've given up hope. They don't care anymore. You can show them my program and they don't care. They don't want it. Uh-uh. I don't want to do it. Uh-uh. Don't show me anything, mom. Don't show me anything, dad. I'm not interested. Typically, a girl only gets to that place if you've tried a lot of things that haven't worked. I'm not blaming any of you parents if this is what's happened. But the reality is there are more girls that are like more gung ho and more interested in getting the help sooner than later, right? If your daughter has been struggling for a really long time, you run the risk of your daughter just like waking up one morning and being like, I'm done trying. We've been to five therapists. I've been to residential. I've tried every medication under the sun and nothing is working and I'm sick of it. So I'm not even going to try anything anymore. So mom, dad, don't show me anything. Don't send me to a therapist. Don't, don't, I, I'm done. That's the risk that you, that you run into if your daughter has been struggling for a long time. Okay. Unfortunately, I cannot help those girls who do not want the help because unlike therapy, what we do in my program requires effort, requires your daughter's participation, requires your daughter to step up in a really big way. Now, we can work with self-sabotage. We can work, like I can work with girls, like helping them to get out of their own way. But in order for these girls to even be ready for a program like mine, they have to say, they have to be able to say like, I'm open to receive help. 
I know I can't do this on my own. I do, I do need help. You know, that's the starting point. Um, and it breaks my heart because I've actually been taking a lot of, um, uh, the woman, um, on my team, my team member who typically takes calls with families was out, um, with COVID for a week. And so I was getting back on the calls and like taking all of these calls with families, which I used to do for years and years and years. And I just haven't been doing it recent, you know, um, recently. And so I've, I've talked to so many families and enrolled so many girls just over the last week alone. And it broke my heart because I, there were two conversations I had with two separate families and it was so sad and my heart just broke for them because two families that we had, you know, the mom, the dad and the daughter were there and same thing with another family. And the girl just didn't want the help. And both girls had been struggling for a while and they both were like, so against it. So not willing. And it, it was very hard because then I, I have to tell the parents, you know, I, I try as much as I can to help the girl like see the light at the end of the tunnel, even if she can't see it yet. And there's only so much I can do. And so for these two families, it was like, it was like gut wrenching because I had to, you know, speak to them privately. You know, the daughter left and I said, look, I'm really, really sorry. I cannot help your daughter. And I think people respect me more for the fact that I have a program that has these standards where I'm not just trying to get everybody's money here. That's not why I do what I do. You know, I'm not in this for the money. I'm in this for the transformations that these girls deserve to have. And so while I could enroll everybody under the sun and just be like, oh yeah, come into my program, whether your daughter wants it or not, I don't care. Sure, let's see. Let's see how it goes. That's not how I operate. That's not the kind of coach or the kind of person that I am. When a girl comes into my program, one, she's already agreed that she wants the help. She's, she's said that she's coachable, that she's willing to show up, yada, 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 like all the things, right? That's the starting off point. It is. It's the starting off point. And I feel like people respect me more because I am, I am willing to myself and also, you know, the women on my team who also have these calls with families will say to families, I'm sorry, like Brianna can't, can't help your daughter. Or I will say that I'm sorry. I can't help your daughter. She doesn't want this. And I'm not sharing this with you to like put myself on any kind of pedestal or make myself sound, you know, amazing or what I'm like, that's not why I'm sharing this with you. I'm sharing this with you because again, the reality is there are families and moms and dads who would do anything to get their daughters in my program. And some of those girls just don't want it. And I cannot help those girls. And those girls don't come in. They're not invited in. Because at the end of the day, why would I have a girl come into my program if I don't, if I can't help her, then I'm just a fraud, you know, then I'm not walking the talk and, and speaking the truth, you know, and that, again, that's just not who I am. So I focus on the girls that I can actually help. Okay. So if your daughter has been struggling, if your daughter is anxious, depressed, suicidal, having suicidal ideation, if she's self-harming, if she's got an eating disorder, if she hates herself, anything like that, share this, this with your daughter. I have a webinar. I'll leave it below. Check it out. Healing the new medicine for anxiety and depression. Share that with your spouse or your partner or your husband or whomever, you know, Get your daughter to watch a few of the testimonials. See, help her to see that there's something else out there that actually works for a change. And if your daughter is interested, if she's ready, book a call. Book a call. Seriously. Like the worst that will happen is that it's not a fit and you go on your own way and we go on our own way and that's it. 
but what's the best that can happen? Like the best case scenario for you to book a call is that your daughter and like, let me, let me break this down for you. My program is 12 weeks, three months. How long has your daughter been suffering already? How long? Right? It doesn't take that long for healing and transformation when you have the right approach. But when you don't have the right approach, it can take years, if not decades, if not a lifetime to figure this stuff out. So you can check out my masterclass because this was a long Facebook Live. If you wanna just jump into booking a call, maybe you've watched the masterclass. Maybe you've just kind of held yourself back thinking it was gonna get better. You know, maybe you were just kind of like, we're just gonna pray and, you know, keep the faith and hope that this gets better. Look at your daughter and her life. Has it gotten better? You know, has it? And if the answer is no, then it's time for another approach. So I'm gonna leave the link below again to watch the masterclass. Um, if you wanna book a call, I'll leave that link below as well. Please know that your daughter has to want the help. Please don't book a call and then ghost us either. It's like, if you're gonna book a call, like be serious, be committed, you know, like show up. Don't, don't waste our time, you know? We don't waste, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna waste your time, you know? So please, like, if you're gonna book a call, like be serious, get ready, like get ready, like show up for the call um, and let's do this. Cause your daughter doesn't have more time to waste here. If your daughter has been struggling for a long time, that's a lot of wasted time already where she could have been, you know, healing and being in her, in her heart and enjoying life, right? And again, please know I do not put any shame or like any blame or I don't want you guys to judge yourself for, Oh, like I shoulda, woulda, coulda, you know, like, why didn't I know about this sooner? Well, you're no, you know about it now. So now it's like, what are you going to do with this information? You know, you can book a call, you can watch my webinar, you can take action, or you can be one of those people who says I'm interested, but not really take the action and then continue to watch your daughter struggle. Like, I don't want that for you, but it's not, it, it is not my life. It is, it is your daughter's life and, and, you know, and you get to make those decisions with her for whatever, um, you know, for whatever you decide to do. So with that, I'm gonna go make some dinner right now. And um, if you have questions, comments, leave them below and um, I'll make sure to answer them. And so yeah, have a great night, everybody. Love you guys, bye.